Your mother's name is Martha too? So is mine. Today we'll be having a look at Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice Batman. Fearing the actions of a godlike superhero left unchecked, Gotham City's own formidable forceful vigilante takes on Metropolis's most revered modern day savior, while the world wrestles with what sort of hero it really needs, and with Batman and Superman at war with one another, a new threat quickly arises, putting mankind in greater danger than it's ever known before. Here's Batman up close and out of the packaging, and let's first take a look of his at his accessories. He comes with a trading card with a poster for Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice on the front. Hopefully we get a Henry Cavill Superman. That would be perfect. And then on the back, it has a little read-up that I read at the beginning of this video. If you want to pause and take a look at it here, feel free to. Alright, there's that. And of course it comes with the generic DC multiverse display stand that comes with all the regular figures. Nothing special about that. And his accessories. He comes with a pair of... Oh, there goes a hand. Yep, don't drop the hands, people. Comes with a pair of gripping hands. Two things of batterings. And his... Grappler, grappler hook, whatever this is called. Grapple hook, something like that. All right, let's get a closer look at those, shall we? All right, just let me zoom in. All right. So let's take the figure off to the side. And let's get a closer look at the accessories. So the grappler hook, the grappler hook, the mold is very nice. You can see the the details of the the metal the what, how the mold look. It, the mold is exactly how it looks in the movie, and every other time he uses it in the DCEU movies. The only minor gripe with this is it's all black. It's not painted because technically this the handle is like a brown has like a wood texture look to it, and this is supposed to be have the metal silver and all that. It would have been nice if McFarlane would have painted this, but the sculpt is very nice. I'm very pleased with this. That's the only gripe is gripe. It's the only gripe is I wish it was painted, but it's not a big issue. It's not gonna bother me too much. Just a little nitpicky, but in that this is a really good mold, and his batterings. They are completely black piece of. Thick plastic. They aren't completely black in the movie. They're silver with like a little line right here. But I mean, that's not a big deal. It's really thick. I I don't think the previous batterings from Batfleck were this thick. But it is a, technically a toy, so... Eh, just minor gripes. I've seen some people have more issues with this than others. Me, it's just... It, it's fine. It's just batterings, nothing special. The gripping hands. He comes with in the packaging. He comes with one hand gripping, one hand, uh, one fist. I just put both fists in and took out the gripping hands. And then he has a pair of fists. Let's set those off right here. And let's bring him over. Let's look at the figure, and then we can talk about how he looks with the accessories. Set those off to the side. We have been waiting for the suit he wore in Batman v Superman for a long time. I don't know what took McFarlane so long to make it, but I'm very happy they did. Now, I've heard people talk about how it's not completely accurate. I get it. It's probably as accurate as I... I don't know who, who painted it or whatever, but... It's close. So let's take a look at the, the sculpt, shall we? 
you can see he, there's a design with all these textures in here, which I do actually, I do like that. Even though the suit wasn't super textured like that, but it is nice. You can see the wrinkles for to see where his muscles are. See, it's a tight-fitting suit. You can see in the ab area. You can see all the muscle tech, muscular textures. And you can see how it's like has the wrinkles to show that it's like a tight suit and it's not super loose. And then on the bat symbol, it has a battle damage. It has like scratches and scuffs and stuff to show the suit's been been through it. And then the bat symbol they have is perfect. So no complaints there. Now technically the belt is not completely accurate, but I kind of like the gold belt better than the belt that was in the movies. Technically it has supposed to have like some black shading on it. And it's like dull gold, but I think that looks fine. And you see the mold for the for the gauntlets and is good. The only thing is there's supposed to be like hints of silver on the knuckles and right here on the bat spikes or whatever these are called and it's like that on both sides um the boots technically supposed to have a little goldish tip tip but no big deal um i've seen people say that they're not happy with the way the suit looks let me zoom in a little bit if i can get the camera to go down but you can kind of see it has like this blue tint to it it doesn't really bother me I don't know in the movies it was a little bit more gray than the blue tint, but I think it looks fine. Um, the head sculpt, I think there are those rights issues with Ben Affleck, and so I believe this is his stunt double. I don't remember the stunt double's name, but they got it close. You can see it has little, the cleft chin about right there. You can see the eyes look like he hasn't gotten any sleep in like days, how red they are, if the camera can focus or not. And let's get in there. The cowl's fine. It looks good. Um, the only thing is, it's supposed to be a little, his neck's supposed to be a little thicker. And I think the issue is the ball joint that's on the head is long. It's a little too long. And I've seen people customize it to fix it, but... I'm not a customizer. I just do reviews. And I just put it on the shelf. Simple as that. Uh, the cloth cape is nice. I've seen other figures now starting to get bendy wires capes. Kind of wish the bendy wire ones with this one. And of course, the back. What people have been complaining about how there was a lack of paint. And I can kind of see it, but on mine, it kind of looks like it's a little... I mean, you can see it, but it's not... I've seen people where it's just like completely... like pale back here on mine it's not too bad but i mean all companies do this with their toys a lot of them do but let's just see now the paint on mine is perfect you can see the texturing on the bat logo the face any paint mishaps no not i mean it may look like it a little bit right here i don't know if you can only pick it up on the camera but no, the mold of the cowl is fine. I like how the ears, perfectly. They're short, how they were. He didn't have long ears. You can see the redding on there. <clears throat> well, yes, some of the coloring is not completely accurate. The molding of this figure is, how I say, exceptional. You can get him in some really good poses. So let's see what he looks like with his accessories. So let's take out a hand. Let's put in this one. Let's put the grappler hook in his hand. Uh, kind of have to kind of, yeah. If it'll get in there, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze. It's a little thick. Like, it's really, I think it might be actually a little bit big for his hand. But, yeah, you can see he can hold it. So, yeah, he can shoot a grapple grapple uh, hook at the camera. I mean, it, it, it might look a little bit big. Maybe if it was just a little bit smaller, but I think it's fine. Again, the colors are not cracked. It's supposed to be, it's not all black, but it's not a big deal. 
Let's see. Now, the better ink, absolutely, this thick better ink, he can hold it. It's just, like I said, it's like one of the thickest batterings I probably have I've ever seen in a figure. Like, the thickness. I don't have any more other uh, Batman, I mean Ben Affleck Batman figures, but I don't think the rest of these are this thick. I've seen other people comment about that. I mean, it doesn't bother me. It's a toy, so I understand. But, uh, let's see if I, let, let's, let's, let's see what it looks like, uh, with, for, some, let's see what it looks like with some comparison, shall we? Some other multiverse figures. All right, let's see what it looks like with some other movie figures. First, we have the Flash figure from the Flash movie. You see, obviously, oh, come on, don't stand, please. You can see that he is taller, taller than the Flash. I just kind of figured he would be. You can see proportionally, completely different, much bigger. The Flash is a really lean, small person. Here he is with Blue Beetle. Very good figure. If you do not have this, I recommend you get it somehow. Very good Blue Beetle figure. You can see with him, obviously, I would hope Batman's taller. This is technically, Blue Beetle's technically a teenager. And then, let's see, it looks like next to another Batman. And we have Batman Hush, the black and gray version. That's how they look. Obviously, it's a movie figure. It's going to be smaller than a comic book figure. But I mean, Hush Batman is just a big Batman, mo Batman body in general. <clears throat> but um, hold on, I might. No, I don't think I have any more comparisons. That that yeah, so that might be it for the comparisons. So, let's get into the articulation, shall we? Ah, let me just hit the camera. Oh, oh, come on. Okay. Uh, the articulation, standard articulation for McFarlane figures. The head is on the ball joint. It can move all around. It can look kind of look up. It can look down a little bit. It can go right. It can go left. It can go all the way. Uh, arms can go all the way around. Of course, there's little sort of butterfly joints just there to cover the joint and make it look more flesh double jointed elbows his wrist can swivel uh where's the there it is he has is that a oh, normal vertical i mean horizontal i would have preferred a vertical thing just because of the old bad ring um ab can go for it that much can go back that much can turn but don't turn it too much or else it'll pop off and it can just plug be pegged back into place but and the, yeah and it's just because of the way they sculpted all the muscles and stuff by his lats and right here he won't be able to turn that much um there is a waist movement right here legs can go forward that much but of course the figure diaper, as it's called, is right here. But it can go for that much. It can go back that much. And then, of course, the legs can go out. We're going to have a look at the underside of them. You can see a little ratchet joints right here. As you look at uh, the crotch shot for Batman. But you can see that nice, you can hear that nice ratchet joint right there. I do love that. Double jointed knees. Although the knee joint, I don't, I, I don't, I don't get this. Why, why is it pointed? It just, it looks odd, but I mean, it's whatever, but it's just, why is there a pointed knee joint? It looks kind of weird. Um, feet can go forward, they can go back. Ankle pivot, 
my ankle swivel and go full 360 degrees and of course really teeny tiny toe articulation like really tiny like for that that's like on par of like some for some female figures with heels like that is tiny I'm very pleased with this figure. This should have been the first um, Batflick Batman that McFarlane should have gave us, because this figure sold out when it first when it was released, and you can see there's a demand for Ben Affleck's Batman. With the minor parts of it missing paint in some areas and not looking completely accurate, with that aside, this figure is probably my favorite McFarlane figure that I do have. I mean, I don't have a lot, but this figure is probably my favorite one. This is my only Ben Affleck Batman, but it's not my only movie figure, as you saw in the comparisons. And yes, the accessories, the grapnar, the grapnar hook is a little bit big, but it works just fine. It could use some color. The bad rings are thick, but it doesn't bother me as much. Other than that, I'd say this figure is worth a pickup of that McFarlane price of $23 is about how much it's going to run you. But hopefully in the future we get a Henry Cavill Batman. I mean a Henry Cavill Superman from this movie. That would be nice. And then hopefully they do an armored Batman look. Although I don't know quite how they would do that with the kryptonite mist gun or whatever that grenade launcher is. Because DC doesn't want guns with their figures. Which is odd because they have guns and comics and stuff, so don't quite understand that. And I hope they include his kryptonite spear. That would be perfect. Or you could do... No, don't do a two-pack. Never mind. But with that aside, the small little things for this figure. This figure is perfect, in my opinion, as it can be. I'm pleased with this. And the folks over at McFarlane Toys are nailing these movie figures so far. This is probably one of the best ones. And these new releases coming up, I'm hoping that they show more movie figures. Still waiting for a Val Kim or Batman Forever figure. The movie was not bad, but I want one of those figures. With that being said... Make sure to leave a make leave a comment down below, like the video and subscribe. Share the video with all your friends and family. I want to get my content out there so way more subscribers is makes me happy. And I'll always remember that my cash app is down below in the description. And stay tuned for more McFarlane reviews and so on. But as always, have a good day, folks. Crimson out.